I have had a big day of throwing calendars away. Oof, done a lot of cutting because the older calendars were wiro bound and that's not recyclable. Well, not the recycling I have. Recycling I have is it's just paper and cardboard. I have to remove everything else. Kind of hard to get a sense of it, but that's about two feet deep of calendars. And the neater you pack them, the better the yield from the skip. And no, I'm not talking about an Aussie. But over here, let's talk about the Nikon Z50. I think there are some very exciting and interesting choices being made here by Nikon. And I just want to talk through some of those because I think this is good. I think there's 13 pallets here and they are all going to end up up that very large wall. And maybe you can get a better chance of scale because that's a bookshelf. That's the wall. I've cleaned all of that off. And this space here is where all the recycled calendars were living, the calendars to be recycled and they've now all been moved. My biggest criticism of this camera is the lack of in-body stabilization. Now I have no idea what a camera like this costs to make so I can't really comment on it. I just feel that's the one thing that would have taken it from good, good to very good to outstanding. That's, that's my only gripe. Conversely, they've made some lenses with VR in them and that's fine, but the beauty of this Z50 is that it has the full-sized Z mount. And that segues me very, very nicely into perhaps the most important thing about the Z camera from my perspective. And the most important thing is running along here. Now again, it's a bit hard. Don't know, this is a old Star Trek ship I had anyway, all the way along here. All these boxes along here, all the way along. And then this gap here is the ones today. So I've done about maybe four or five rows and there's another maybe 12. And the most important thing is you can use the pro glass. And there is nothing to make me think that the sensor in there is gonna be anything other than on par up with the best that Nikon has to offer. Sure, it's cropped, but besides being cropped, I think it's gonna be a quality sensor. And from the, the visuals I've seen so far, both video and stills, it is looking exactly that. So at the end of the day, what you're getting here is a body, sub $1,000 US, which you can stick amazing glass on it, like the Z 50mm 1.8 that we've already raved about here on this channel. Watch the video up there and all the other great Z glass, which I'm slowly going through. And you can stick, stick it on this inexpensive body and just you get top-notch shots. And actual image quality from making stills in appropriate light up until when you acquire Ibis. And then they've invented a thing called a tripod that actually, you know, that, that'll solve the problem if you want to solve it that way. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say here is this segue, the, mo the, the most exciting and best part about this camera is that I would say it's on par quality wise. It's just a crop sensor instead of full frame with the six and the seven. And lens and sensor is what makes the image. That's it. There's nothing else that makes the image. Processing, but they would all have similar processing. I think you're going to get an astonishing image making machine for a very low price. So that's, that's the high level statement and then your use case determines whether the Z50 is actually gonna work for you. Maybe you need IBIS, and if you need IBIS because you're gonna use uh, non-vibration uh, reduction lenses, then you can't get it. But if you don't need IBIS, and if you want this flip down screen, which, you know, to be honest, I'm filming right now, and I'm relying on uh, face autofocus. I've got my technique of how to ensure to a certain extent how well I'm in that I'm in focus but it doesn't always work sometimes things throw it out so having a screen that you can see is useful having it flipped down well yeah, you can hold the camera in your hand and do it that way but it's not very good if uh, you're doing what I'm doing right now and it's mounted so lots to do anyway you can see all the mess lots of cutting lots of destroying lots of stuff lots of tools the other day we only had one drill and one battery. Now we have four batteries and two drills because they, they overheat and <laughs> then you have to just stop. 
no problems like that today because I had so many batteries and so many drills. And you're only going to kind of do it, then it's handheld, and then you go, well, I want VR or IBIS. Which, of course, if you use the new DX lenses, well, that's fine then. That all works. Which segues me nicely to the new DX lenses. Now we have a uh, 16 to 50, which is a 24 to 75 equivalent. And that lens is tiny, it's, a, it's, it's about this thick. So another highlight point for me about the Z50 is, is the camera is tiny. It's shorter, a bit shorter, it's a bit thinner. I think it was something like 400 grams, which is insane. And then you put this pancake zoom on the front and the whole package is tiny. And I'm thinking to myself, I believe this thing's gonna be a great image maker. And it is the perfect sort of camera to have with you everywhere. Like if you don't wanna carry, like I'm using the Z7 right now, if you don't wanna carry a $5,000 and a $1,000 lens with you everywhere you go, this camera is going to give you, I would say near on 100% of the same relative image quality especially for filming things like this and just taking stills here and there. So, so great for sort of social media, vlogging, parties, life, kids, some holiday scenarios. Crazy! It's a crazy camera that's going to fit in that and it's a crazy size. But I believe the ergonomics are very similar to the Z6 and the Z7 and that's a great thing. That is a great thing. Now, of course, the battery is smaller. That's because the grip is a bit smaller. They're not using XQD, but that's because probably so many people moaned about it. And I'm sad about that. I think XQD slash CF Express, I think that's the future. And prices will come down. But hey, it's consumer level. So, it, you know, you can stick sort of any SD card in there from the last decade. And, and it will work. So consumer focused. This is an amazing entry level camera that if you're just taking straight stills, I think the quality is going to be amazing and you're getting a lot of bang for buck. You're getting into the Z ecosystem so you can buy full frame Z lenses if you want to start building that as well. It's really, really smart. And you can get in the US the two lens kit for $1,300 US, which would probably make it $1,800 here, which is, which is not super cheap. But hey, you're getting a complete package. I think it's amazing. Let's touch on quickly the fact that it does have 4K video up to 30 frames a second, which is the same as what I can do now. I think that's fantastic. It does have 120 frames per second at 1080p, which again is all we have now on these current cameras. So really spec-wise, except for the IBS, it's actually kind of on par, as in its capacity to make an image. Sure, the EVF is not quite as many dots. Sure, the back screen is not quite the same. Sure, there's less buttons on the back, but at the end of the day, you can make super quality images for a ridiculously affordable price. You can have a two lens kit, which would just cover anything, anyone, whatever. Like as a travel camera and these two lenses, outstanding. So I want to say congratulations to Nikon for drilling straight into entry level market an entry-level device that's going to give hobbyists and enthusiasts out there a great opportunity to get into the Z at a very low price point just to see if they like it. It's got a flash, an inbuilt flash, which I always think is very cute. The, the, the cheaper the camera, the more likely it is to have a flash built in. The more you pay, it's unlikely to have a flash. Because I actually quite liked, I think it was the D810 that still had a flash, or was it the D800, one of them. And you, so you could, you could use it to fire other flashes. And then in the D850, they removed it. And, and I, I saw that as, you know, something that you're losing. Obviously, it makes the camera stronger. Let me grab my bag. There's some of the batteries in there. Going to hit the road, Jack. Yes, people often ask me, why do I have so many keys? Uh, it's because right now I'm running four sites. To reiterate those four sites, one of them's finished now. So I've just uh, got to get it off my hands. That's my old office at Garden Vale. There's here, there's home, which I have a full office set up there because you never know when you want to do anything. Whew, the wind's blowing. And then there's block place, which is where we do focus group. I have a studio there. So that's a lot of keys and a lot of different things you have to worry about. I'll just put you down for a second. To not have that there and it makes the wet weather ceiling better to not have that there. So. At a pro level camera, I can look. I think it's a great little unit. I think it's going to go a long way, and I could actually contemplate 
having it as a basically a vlogging camera. I'd like to see a bit more on how people react to it from a video perspective before I dive in, but and and as a second camera, basically second unit or just a A camera, B camera, you know, you want to do a two camera video shoot. It's perfect. I mean it's a crop sensor, but that's okay. You'd, often if you're doing a two camera shoot, you know, one, one camera can be the wide and another one can be the close-up. Well you use your crop sensor camera for the close-up. Still gonna get great 4K. And I believe it has the same focusing system as the Z6, which is the same as the Z7, pretty much. And eye detect and face detect all work magnificently. So and and it's look it's looking really good. So that's the Z50. I think it's a great foray. It is showing us that Nikon mean business at all levels. I think next we'll see an ultra high level camera probably, whether that's the Z8 or whatever that might be, the high end version. And uh, of course the Noct has finally been announced, the 58mm 0.95 aperture, 2.2 kilogram weighing Noct lens madness. I think it's a great idea to show off their technology and their optical prowess. I, I, I'm not an A-sayer. I, I would buy one of these lenses if I could afford it. I absolutely would because I love the idea of being able to shoot in ultra low light. That's something that that's what's that's what drove me to ha uh, purchasing 1.4 lenses years ago. And I love that idea of that very short depth of field and the sort of magical backgrounds that can be created by from it. And an example of that is the last video that I did, which you can see here, where if you jump to the last few minutes, that's the 50mm 1.8 being shot at night, wide open at 1.8. And the background just looks fantastic. And if you pull that background into focus, it doesn't look any good. But out of focus, it just looks magical. So. The Noct allows for some pretty magical low light experimentation and with IBIS now and the, able, and, and the capacity to shoot at I, higher and higher ISOs, it's just a combination. But of course, in this country it'll be eleven or $12,000. That's way out of my price range. The most expensive lens I ever got was my 200 to 400 millimeter f4 back in 2014. And it cost me eight or nine thousand dollars. And you know, it had autofocus and VR in it, and it had 200 to 400. This thing does not have autofocus, it does not have VR, and it does not zoom. And it will be 50% more expensive. Maybe if I ever win Lotto, or as we call it here, Tats Lotto, I'll get one then. I, I better start buying some tickets. Anyhow, the Noct, very exciting lens, and uh, I might, I might rent one. Although it might cost $500 a day just to rent one. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on the Z50. If you're thinking about mirrorless and you're not in mirrorless yet, would you consider that as a, just an entry-level foray, a little bit of a play? And what do you think of the lenses? Look, my, my only gripe about those lenses is obviously the uh, apertures are pretty, pretty high. You know, they're pretty high. Three, they start at 3.5 and go up into the fives and sixes, depending on which lens. Like I said, I love low depth of field, so that's why I spend money on more expensive lenses. But, you know, these lenses aren't cheap. Like I said, with the kit, you, you get the two lenses for like $400, which blows my mind. What do you think? Is this showing us that Nikon means business? I think it is. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please subscribe. If you like this, press the like button. Get the word out there and please share. Yeah, you've got to share because it makes us all smarter. And this is an era where we need to be smarter. There's no question about that. All right. See you soon. Look after yourself. Have a great night. Have a great day. Have a great, have a great breakfast. Bye for now.